Uh, hallelujah. Just another reason to go to heaven. Hallelujah. There's a lot of good things that happen around here that I sure wish he could see. Hallelujah. It's not fair, but the fairness is not for us. Because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, he, he wouldn't be worried about it. I still miss him, just like it was yesterday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Of course, there might be a lot of things different if he was still around, too. So, I guarantee you I'd take whatever came if he just could be with us one more time. But, amen. But I plan to be with him and all the other loved ones that's passed on. Amen. Don't you? Amen. Don't you plan on going to heaven? Don't you want to go? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be saved. Amen. I want to hear the trumpet sound, Brother McKinney. Amen. I, I want to be part of the alive and remain. And I got a feeling. I got a feeling it won't be long. I got a feeling it won't be long. Acts the 14th chapter. I didn't text you anything, and I apologize for that. I came out here intending to do it and didn't. Acts 14, 19 through 22. Amen. Good service tonight. Amen. Good singing, good worship, good spirit here. Amen. There is healing in the house. Hallelujah. Not just healing for sickness, but healing for minds, healing for hearts, healing for homes. He's the healer. He even called himself one time to the children of Israel. He said, I am the God that healeth thee. I am the God that healeth thee. Hallelujah. Sometimes, I don't know why, sometimes there's bumps in the road. And let me tell you something tonight. Somebody hear me. Right now, if you don't listen to nothing else I say tonight, hear this. You don't have to be strong all the time. You do not have to be strong all the time. That Brother David, there's a reason why he said, cast your cares upon me. There's a reason why that he said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You don't have to be strong all the time because he's always the same. He's always strong. He's always mighty. He's always the same. And life's going to throw you curveballs. And life's going to put bumps in the path. And, and, and there's going to be a ditch in the road and you're going to have to go through some things sometimes sometimes you're not going through anything it's just life you don't have to always be strong because he is and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul having stoned Paul that means they gathered him they stood him in a circle they gathered around him, Brother Rice, and they picked up stones, not little pebbles, stones, and they threw them at him, hit him in the head, the back, wherever they could hit. They threw stones at him, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. I remember a story. I'm going to let you sit down just a second. You may be sitting there a while. Mark Twain was traveling in the West. Anybody heard this story before? Mark Twain was traveling way out in the West and making one of his rounds that he did. And somebody sent word back to a newspaper in the East that Mark Twain had died. And they put a headline up, Mark Twain is dead. Well, somehow he got wind of it. 
And he sent a message back to them and said, tell them that the report has been grossly exaggerated. Because he was not dead. Somebody say that. I'm not dead. I might have been down, but I'm not dead. I might have been wounded, but I'm not dead. How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, God, for your encouragement. Thank you for your encouragement. In the name of Jesus, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Paul and Barnabas are at Lystra. Brother Rice, there was a man there, crippled from his mother's womb, the Bible says, and he had never walked. The same heard Paul speak. If we could ever get the mindset of somebody that has no hope, when we hear the word of God spoke, the Bible said he heard Paul speak, and Paul looked at him steadfastly, and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Where did that faith come from, Brother McKinney? Let me back up again. The same heard Paul speak. And Paul looked at him steadfastly and perceived that he had faith to be healed. Where did the faith come from? The faith came from him hearing the word of Paul. The faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Whoa! Every promise that is in that book is good for us. Every promise uh, that he ever gave to the disciples, to the Jews, to the Gentiles is good for us. I wish we could let our faith out tonight. Uh, I felt that when we were praying for people, uh, we've got to let our faith out uh, and let the Lord work a miracle in somebody's life. Uh, We've got to let our faith out uh, and let the Lord do what he wants to do in somebody's life. Got to believe. Got to have faith. Paul spoke to the man. Understand this. The Bible tells us he had never walked, but he had faith. That he could walk. He had faith that he could walk. Paul spoke to him because he perceived he had faith, Brother McKinney. And he said, stand upright on your feet. And the Bible said, and he leaped and walked. When the people saw it, they began to cry out. They said, the gods have come down to us. In the likeness of men. They said Barnabas was really Jupiter. And that Paul was really Mercurius or Mercury. Because he was the chief speaker. And you'll remember from your your history classes of, of Roman and Greek mythology. Jupiter was the king of the gods. And Mercury was the messenger god. They, they gave him a mythological uh, uh, names uh, and mythological personification as, as they, they had no other explanation that this man had been healed. Then the priest of Jupiter who lived in the city 
He brought oxen and garlands under the gates and would have offered sacrifices with the people. Brother McKinney, they decided we're going to offer sacrifice to these gods that have come down among us. Let's back up. Paul's preached the word. Somebody has received the word. And when they receive the word, their faith built up. And they have just seen a notable miracle. And the Lord has healed somebody. And the Lord has touched somebody. And there's a change taking place in somebody's life. But as you well know, every time the Lord starts working on somebody's life, hell takes notice. And hell rises up. And they come after him. And the first thing they came after him with, Brother Robbie, was they came after him with the ideology that these guys are gods. They totally missed it. But somehow how out of all the preaching and all the teaching the lame man got it but those that were able bodied never grasped a hold of the message that Paul was preaching they never grasped a hold of it Paul and Barnabas realizing what was done ripped their clothes off of them as an attention getter and ran among the people saying why do you do this we're just men like you are We preach that you need to turn from this empty religious belief under the living God which has made heaven and earth, the sea, and all things that are therein. Turn to the living God. That's the message we preach, Brother McKinney. I don't have another message. The only message I preach is leave the world, leave the God of the world, and turn to the God of creation. That's the only message I have to preach. And anybody come spouting off anything else, we need to run amongst them, stripping our clothes, figuratively speaking, and declaring that there's only one God. Very shortly, very shortly, we're going to begin a series of lessons on apostolic identity. And we're going to delve very deeply into the oneness of God. We must realize that there's only one God. There's always been one God from the in the beginning was God. There's only one God. There's not uh, there's not a trinity. There's not a polytheistic. Uh, there is not a separate father, a separate son and a separate holy ghost, uh, but all these three are one. And then there's some really good teaching in this passage. But Paul said in times past In times past, he allowed all people to walk in their own way or in their own beliefs. Nevertheless, he left himself a witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Hear me right now. What he is declaring to them, Brother Rice, uh, he is declaring that while you did not believe, he was still blessing you. Well, even though you did not believe and you gave the credit, Brother Billy, they gave the credit to these fictitious gods that stood in the heavens throwing down lightning bolts and crazy stuff like that. That there was a God holding the earth up. That there was a God of the sea and a God of the nighttime and a God of the harvest. And, and Paul was telling them, while you were ignorant and you did not really know the truth, the Lord was still blessing you. The Lord did not take your ignorance as an excuse to slam you and beat you down, but you had crops and your bellies got full and your life was blessed. Somebody needs to realize that the Lord has kept you. He's kept you until you can hear the truth. He's kept you until you can believe the truth. He has kept you for such a time as this. The blessings of God have been in your life so he could keep you. It's just another way of interpreting, I'm with you, but I shall be in you. The Lord has been with us. The Lord has been with us. I'm thinking of Sister Sharon and thinking of Brother Pete talking about it and and Brother Martin again the other night and and even going back in my own mind when I had walked away from God or when I had grown carnal in my mind and my thinking. Brother Robbie, still I can see the hand of God upon my life, the protecting hand of the Lord in my life. The Lord must thank a whole lot of us. We can look back down and see the hand of God has always been with us. God forbid that we lose our mind and give the credit somewhere else. God forbid. And the Bible said they barely restrained the people from offering sacrifices to them. Then certain Jews showed up. 
from Antioch and Iconium. And they persuaded the people. What did they tell them? Brother McKinney, I have no idea. But they went. They went from a miracle and great jubilation to having things all messed up in their mind and giving the credit where it did not go. To the Bible says, they listened to the persuasion. Let me tell you something. There's a big difference in somebody that's full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and somebody that's just riding on emotions. Because you'll ride on emotions uh, and when the Holy Ghost is moving and people are running, you'll run too. You'll jump too. But the first time the devil comes in, you'll jump on his bandwagon too. That's why, Brother Pete, we... Uh, oh. We've got to get something deep down inside of us uh, that is not built upon a feeling. We have got to get something deep down inside of us uh, that says, I know my Redeemer lives. And I may be facing a bump in the road. I may be going through a river. I may be having to climb up a mountain. But that don't mean God's not still God. That don't mean I'm still not victorious. That don't mean that God has turned his back on me. That don't mean that his eyes are still not upon me. He still knows the hairs on my head. He still knows my name. Hallelujah. He knows me. He knows my name. And they persuaded the people. Oh God. They persuaded the people. And they gathered around. They picked up stones and they stoned him, Brother McKinney. Just like they did Stephen. Oh, what the irony of that. It wouldn't be very far, Brother Billy, to, to imagine Paul thinking, I deserve this. I stood by while they did it to Stephen just a short while ago. Brother Robbie, I believe with all of my heart they stoned him in the same manner they did Stephen. That they picked big rocks, some of them hit him in the head. He would fall down, curled up like a little bitty baby while they would stand over him and throw rocks. Uh, and maybe with blood running down their hands from the rocks, uh, they would slam him into his head again. They would hit him in the back. Uh, they would hit him in the legs. Uh, they would hit him in the side trying to break his ribs. The intention was to kill him. A bloodthirsty lust of a mob mentality that is said just because... I don't know what they're thinking. How can you go from wanting to offer sacrifices to him to wanting to kill him in just a matter of a little, a short time? It goes to show you the fickleness of people that ride on emotions. And they stoned Paul, drew him out of the city. I can see him dragging him. Brother Johnny dragging him through the street. Dragging him. Maybe stopping and saying, you want a shot at him? And people would, would just a heinous laugh and caught up in it, stoning him. And the Bible said they drug him out of the city. They drew him out of the city. And supposing, and I hate to, for the children's sake, but we got to be real. Brother Billy, he's laying there, a bloody, beaten mess. Brother David, he's in such bad shape that they think he's dead. Oh, God. Lord, I'm trying to do a good work for you. I'm trying to be faithful. I'm trying to fight the good fight of faith. I'm trying to pray every day, every chance I get. I'm trying to live a holy life. I'm trying to pay my tithes and give in the offerings. I'm trying to come to the house of God. I'm trying to do everything I can. And look, I'm laying out in the street. Oh, I'm reaching into somebody's life tonight. There has got to be a commitment in you that's bigger than anything wrong with you. There has got to be a commitment in you that's bigger. We have got to, yeah, we have got to acquire the attitude that Job had when he said, and I believe him, Brother Pete, I believe him when he said, though he slay me, though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. 
Brother Shannon, I'll tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for in the Holy Ghost. And, and, and I don't know what, what has brought us to this circuitous journey that we've taken. But what I'm looking for in the Holy Ghost uh, is I'm looking for some men uh, and I'm looking for some women uh, whose commitment uh, will not only be as much as mine is, uh, but will even surpass my commitment. Uh, I'm ready to start showing up for church uh, and find somebody else already here. Uh, I'm looking for people that their commitment will rise up uh, and be bigger than what's going on in their life. Uh, the greatest revival that we're going to have is when somebody will snub their nose at adversity and say my God is alive my God is still on the throne my God is still in control though he slay me yet will I trust him if we're going to have the great revival that I believe the Lord has for this community it's going to be because the whole people get on board How be it? As the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. Now, Brother Shannon, I don't believe it was like a, just a miraculous kaboom, and he's on his feet. But I believe, Brother David, that maybe he came back from being unconscious. Brother Robbie, I, I don't believe that he just, just zip doo doo let's go. But I believe he was still hurting. I believe there were still scars, still bruises. I believe maybe he had big fat lips and his eyes about swelled shut. I can see him as he, as he creaked. I can see him as he rolls over in the dust and slowly begins to get to his feet. And the Bible says that he got up and went to the city, Brother McKinney. And the next day, and the next day he joined with Barnabas. And they went to preach the gospel in dirt because the Bible said, and when they had preached the gospel to that city and taught many. the Spirit of God in here. The mission is bigger than what you're going through. Your calling means more than a temporary thing. I had some situations last week, two different situations where people came against me. I had two situations where, where folks came against me. And I'm getting all tore up because I have a propensity to worry over stuff like that. Until I realized uh, I've made the devil mad. And the next morning, I had something new to praise God for. I walked across this front, and I said, Lord, I want to thank you for people getting mad at me. I want to thank you for people talking about me. I want to thank you for opposition coming against me. You're not hearing me very good tonight. I want to praise you. Because I'm having to fight some battles. I want to praise you. Because there's some opposition. Saints of God. We've got to get a hold of the vision. We've got to get a hold of the vision. And our commitment to it. Has got to be stronger. Than anything that's going on in our life. I may have some scars. I may have a fat lip and I may have a black eye, but you know what? I got up. You know what? I got up. And I went to the next place and I preached the gospel. And Brother David, when I got well, when I got well, I went right back there. 
Because when I'm weak, then am I strong. I know I'm ministering to somebody tonight. And they returned to Lystra where he was stoned and to Iconium and to Antioch where those that came from caused him to get stoned. And here's what he did. Verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation I don't know it. Oh, I wish I did. Brother Pete, I'm going through. I'm going to go through blessings. And I'm going to go through tribulation. I'll pay the price. Whatever others do. I've joined in. Of the Lord's despised few. I started with Jesus. Confirming or strengthening the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ Himself said it. If you can't go in with two eyeballs, pluck one of them out. If you can't go in with both arms, cut one of them off. Come on, saints of God, you can go in with bruises. You can go in with scars. You can go in with blood running out of your mouth, nose, ears, eye, and mouth. You can go in beat down, but you will not go in defeated. Brother Billy, I've been praying all day. I came here early this morning. I studied last night. Didn't even preach what I had, Brother David. It was like there was nothing in the whole Bible. I just pressed on. I just tried. I just scratched. I just clawed. These poor people, this poor boy that came here this morning told me that what I preached this morning is the best sermon he ever heard in his life. I told him, I said, I was bad off today. If you want to hear some preaching, you come back. But Brother David, I was in the prayer room again, and I was just praying, Lord, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, and pressing. And then it's like the Lord impressed on me. And sometimes there's just a bump in the road. And boom, I felt the Holy Ghost like a million tons of bricks hit me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. And I realized that I don't have to be strong all the time. I don't have to be invincible all the time. I don't have to put up a good front all the time. Sometimes I just got to be sheltered in his arms. Sometimes I'm going to be knocked down. Sometimes I'm going to have something come against me. Sometimes, yes, sometimes I'm going to get discouraged. Sometimes I'm going to get depressed. Sometimes I'm going to get downhearted. That's just part of being me. But the thing is, I still know that I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I still know that I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I still know that my name is written in the last book of life. And it may not be victory. I'm feeling right now but sister Virginia when the trumpet sounds when the trumpet sounds the Bible don't say nothing about the one that's feeling good going to be caught up the Bible says they are alive and remain and remain remain where remain in the fight remain whoa remain in the fight oh I'm still in it I'm still in it sometimes I'm weak oh Sometimes I'm weak. Sometimes I ain't on fire. Sometimes I'm not on top of the world. But in my heart, I know that I'm full of the Holy Ghost. And I know God's in control. And if I just hold on for a few more minutes. If I'll just hold on through this trial.
Because, Brother McKinney, I'm going to go through tribulation. I'm going to go through trials. Everybody's not always going to like me. Well, let me tell you, I'm not always going to make the right decisions. But I'm always going to be a child of God. And I may get knocked down. But you just give me a day or two. And I'm getting back up. Come on, no, no little five-year-old riding their first bicycle fell off the first time and said, I'm never getting on it again. But they bruised their knee. They ran to mama. They cried. You put a Band-Aid on it. You put a little salve on it. To, and directly in a few minutes, Dad, let's try. Why is it in the kingdom of God when we get our eye blacked or we get tore up or we get a little depressed or we get a little discouraged or the pocketbook gets a little bit low and we got, I can't go to church, I'm so depressed. Just keep on. Sometimes you ain't going to feel nothing. Sometimes, sometimes everybody's going to be shouting and everybody's going to be running the aisles and you're going to look there wondering what's going on here. That's when I'm picking myself up. God. It ain't that difficult. I'm going through. And sometimes I'm in the middle of going through some things. Oh, I ain't quitting. I'm not giving in. I'm not backing down. Marcus, I'm going to heaven. Me and daddy, we're going to stroll over heaven. And if he don't know what's going on here, I got a lot to tell him. I'm going to see my grandma and I'm going to see my grandpa. I'm going to see my loved ones and my friends. I'm going to see Sister Bernice and I'm going to shout with her across the portals of heaven. And let me tell you something. For a few thousand years, I'm going to kneel at the feet of Jesus and I ain't going to be worried about, whoa, I'm not going to be worried about what I've went through down here. I'm not going to be worried because I had a couple bad days. Let's stand our feet. Sometimes my load gets heavy with the things I carry. This world puts up on my back. Oh, but all I have to do is think where I'm headed to. And I see no reason to turn back. I, got to t I hope somebody's hearing me. Receive the word of God. Come on, how many of you have ever sat in a church, when, a service when the Holy Ghost was being poured out and people were being moved by the Holy Ghost shouting and dancing and there you just sit? And the devil will start messing with you. You ain't got nothing. If you had something, you'd be feeling it too. Sometimes, Brother Dole, I'm just weak. It's just part of it. He knew it was going to happen, Brother David. Brother Shannon, there's not ever been one time in my life that I regretted going to the house of God. There's not been one time in my life when I have regretted lifting my hands when I didn't feel nothing. Because just... Just when I started feeling a little bit hopeless, he touched me. Or sometimes it ain't me he touches. Sometimes I see my little brother get a blessing. And I think it's, 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 it's going to be all right. If I can just hold on, it's going to be all right. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. 
Jesus is coming. Say, I got this Holy Ghost down inside of me. I repented of my sins. I was baptized in Jesus' name. And I received the Holy Ghost evidence by speaking in other tongues, just like they did in the Bible. And there ain't enough devils in hell can take that away from me. Oh, yeah, I've doubted. Oh, yes, I've doubted. Oh, yes, I've been afraid, been depressed. I told somebody this morning, I don't mind telling you. I told somebody this morning, it ain't been but just a couple of months ago, Brother Rice, that I started feeling maybe like I made a mistake even letting my name run as pastor of this church. All kinds of junk goes on in your mind. Please don't, don't misunderstand me. I didn't make a mistake. But the devil just messes with you. He just always messing with you. Brother David, he messes with me all the time. And the better I do, the more he messes. But Brother McKinney, I've learned to praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. I'm, I'm closing. I'm done. The devil don't know what to do with somebody that he leaves for dead. But they get up. And they lift their hands, maybe a little bit weak. They may walk with a limp. They may just be only seeing out of one eye. But they're saying, Jesus loves me. This I know. Oh, Paul, come on, bud, come on. No, 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 you, you weren't there with me on the road that day. What happened to me was real. What happened to me was real, and I've heard from the I've heard from the Lord. And he said, I got a work to do. I don't have no choice but to get up. But to get up. And just so the devil knows I'm not defeated and I ain't scared, I'm going right back where I was. And you know what? If they stone me again, I'll be back. Because I'm God's not done with me yet. And Brother Rice, you know what? If he is done with me, Paul said, I know I got to stay with you, but I'd really like to be with him. So if he is done with me, Brother David, it, the only thing that's going to matter, I've got the Holy Ghost. My name's written in heaven. The only thing that's going to make sure I go is if I endure to the end. Hallelujah. These altars are old. I'll tell you what. Rain on that. Come on. Come on. If you're doing all right, pray for me.